Welcome to the Rusted Garden. It's September 3rd and I'm transitioning my container garden from the warm weather crops over to cool weather crops. And one question I get a lot is why do you start seeds indoors during the summer when you can just put them in the ground? And the answer is really simple. You can see all my seed starts. Good sized lettuces and greens in there. I just don't have the room in my containers until about now. So I start them two, three weeks ahead of time, get them up to size, so when they go into the containers, you know, I get a jump on growth. Same thing with my garden out there. It is full of warm weather vegetables. I'm going to clear those out. But what I'm going to show you today is just the transition of moving all these plants into the containers, talk to you about how I do it, and then show you the deck transitioned over from all the warm weather crops, the tomatoes, peppers, basil that I threw down there, and have it set up for the cool season. Let's get to it. Everything's cleaned up. I'm going to use organic products for my cool weather crops. I use both organic products and I will use the chemical man-made products. First thing you want to do is just get rid of everything that is not going to grow anymore. So I cleaned everything out. As I go through I'm going to just tell you what some stuff is. This is sweet potatoes right in there. I got peas in. That's a tomato I pruned back. I did a video on it. Hopefully I get some more cherry tomatoes out of there. As you clear out your containers, loosen up the soil to a good depth, break up all the roots that are left behind, and in there I put anywhere from like in here, three tablespoons of the organic fertilizer. It's about a 555. In the row box I put in two or three, three or four in the large container, one or two in the container that size. You don't have to, you know, be exact, just follow the package. Add in your fertilizer now, and then it's going to all get worked into the soil in a little bit. I've got my oregano cut back, brought up some bright light Swiss chard. Get to see if that eggplant does anything. Another sweet potato vine, that is a yellow cayenne, even though they're orange. And you can just see, I have my containers ready. I've transplanted some onions into containers. Everything looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is, I've watered these, let them get some strength behind them. They were a little bit uh, dehydrated. So maybe in about an hour when he's drink up some more water, I'm going to show you how to plant. I just want to show you too something I got out of the garden, out of the containers. From all the containers I was dumping, I had a bucket of potatoes I never got to. Those are all carrots, some of the orange cayennes, jalapenos, some more onions. So there was a lot in here that I obviously can eat. So I'm going to make something out of that tonight. Flower boxes are ready. This is all going to turn into really cool weather crops. Let me show you how I plant the lettuces. Pretty simple. So here are my lettuce seed starts. I'm actually going to fill all these containers in real time just to show you how much, uh, how quickly you can get these into there and how much time you can save. So I recommend start your lettuces and greens in the seed cells for this exact reason. Now you could go with just one plant. I like to put in several seeds because you're basically just going to cut the leaves off and build your salad. Leave the roots in the ground and it's going the plant will give you more leaves over the cool weather season until a really hard frost comes. But you can see why I like using seed starts. This is arugula. These are all loose leaf lettuces. I just put these in a flat and I'm using a spatula just to take a clump out. Almost like lasagna. Just overseed it and get to planting. Drop them in, soil around it, press it, good to go. Don't worry if some of the plants don't make it. You overseed it. You'd have plenty of growth. There's one. These I'm going to put a lot closer together. And remember, I'm just growing these to collect leaves out of all these containers out here. So I can plant them a lot closer together. Just pick off the leaves. If I wanted to grow a full head like a romaine lettuce or grow these to size, I just want to pinch out some of the plants and just grow one of them, but I don't want to do that. 
This is an end dive. Now these are the lettuces that are right here. I put these in about a week ago and you can see how quickly they take off once they get some room for the roots to start growing. All right, two boxes set up. All right, here's three more containers. Remember, I put in some organic fertilizer, just mix it in, try and get it down about four inches, but just mix it in well. Let me get over to this container real quick. Everything's also gonna get watered in with a fish emulsion when I'm done. So here are some beets. I'm growing these just for the greens. When you use these pea pots, peel the peat pot down so that when you plant, you're burying the pea pot, peat pot under the soil. If you leave parts of the peat pot sitting up, it'll actually wick water away from the roots and your plant can dry out. But again, I'm dropping in the same lettuces throughout the containers. And when these get going, I'm going to have tons of leaves just to come out and snip off and make salads. That's an endive right in the middle. Nothing fancy. Put in some arugula. Put a big pile right in there. Those are good to go. Let's put in some more beet leaves in there. That's a little beat up. Squeeze that in here. These are actually bull's blood beets. The leaves are a little bit green right now, but they should turn a great red color. Alright, here's a Batavian endive. That'll go right there. And more arugula. Press everything in nicely. One more container. More beets. Some more endive. Let's see. Some more loose leaf lettuces. And using these cells, I can just reach back, grab a plug, Drop them in. We're going to finish this up. Nothing fancy. Just get them into the soil. Now if you watched my other videos, you know that I put a lot of peat moss into my container mixes. And that's so that it retains water. Because we're going into the fall here, watering isn't going to be as much of an issue. But you really want a lot of organic matter in your container mixes. And I like to use peat moss. We're going to really pack the greens, the leaf lettuces in here. And again, I'm not growing these just to grow one plant to full size. I just want to get a bunch of leaves, be able to walk from container to container, cut off some leaves, and then have a great salad almost every night. And you can see I'm packing stuff in here. This is a Danielle variety, a different leaf, a little more red. And I know I've stressed it a couple of times, but 
the seed starts are just a great way to transition from warm weather crops, now let's put that in there, to your cool weather crops. And by seed starting them in these trays, when I'm ready to clear everything out, I already have some great lettuces and greens that can go into the containers. Good to get to fertilizing it. So I'm feeding this with fish fertilizer. It's a 5-1-1 fertilizer. That means it's going to be 5 rating for nitrogen, which is what you want for leafy greens. You want more nitrogen. And a lot of people ask me, how much water-soluble fertilizer do you put on your plants? And I just want to show you. So once a week, fish emulsion or fish fertilizer, one tablespoon per gallon of water. And this is how I do it. I just soak the top in. You don't have to overdo it. You're just getting the nitrogen fertilizer to your plants one time a week. Now this is not a watering, this is just a feeding. So before I did this, I watered everything to make sure all the soil was um, moist. And then I come in and I just drop the fish fertilizer on just like that. You don't need to overdo it. Just a quick pour on top one time a week and it'll really get the leafy greens going. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my blog at www.therestofgarden.blogspot.com and I'm also trying to get to 100,000 uh, YouTube subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And if you are a subscriber, thank you very much. But could you also spread word of my channel? I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you.